Okay. As for end game content, um, still using a lot of the setup. I still do use the Unity token. Uh, when we switch out, we do switch over to a necklace like this. Now, it'd be best if we could find something that rolled better with this acceleration here. So minion acceleration on hit would be what I'm looking for so that I could spec out of it the acceleration and go for a little bit more damage. But we haven't been able to roll that correctly yet, so I'm just going to stick with something like this. Uh, here's the necklace that we rolled for damage. The suffixes don't usually matter too much, but we still got something that even the 1% still works. HP, minion damage, and amplification was the best I could find, and it rolled this critical damage here. Water does have a chance of rolling extra minion crit. Just haven't had it happen yet. Shoulders with the minion damage. And here is the Chaos Star we ended up making. Only got to the tier 4 one. Never had a, a tier 6 drop. Still got the minion damage on here. The two-handed weapon is equipped. Extra damage. I mean... You know, it comes into effect sometimes. It's never going to really be major. Here's some of the charms. Minion damage and attack speed is the main thing we're looking for. Using this because I needed the Hamal 10% HP. HP, minion attack speed. And HP. The Sephdar's Harmony tier 6 to get the last bonus. So we went with extra armor, extra HP, and maxed out Sephdar. Current Zodiac setup, um, a little bit with more tanky things, and I'm going for the alert movement right now. Uh, so we don't have a few minion tree nodes. Other than that, the only thing that really matters for these builds usually is this. Like, what are you doing here? If you're going to wear the necklace and the, and wear the staff, spec out of this, go into the two times two minion damage. This is pretty much my favorite. This special for the second specialization in the straw. And this is the go-to for most specs. Now, if you get the acceleration effect on your necklace, go ahead and spec out of this. Go over here and start going into stat transfer since you're going to start getting a lot more stats in the next next uh, expansion stuff here. Or you can go for this. I haven't I've specced into this a few times. I, I didn't like it. It wasn't as good as it as it looks, but stat transfer is good. As for build here, using Seal of Striking, summon out the five Abysslings. So the main thing you do is you just go in on a boss, slap the electric area down. When you do that, it's going to activate your Farker Focus. So you, by the time this has gone by, you need to do a rune knight again. Bring your rune knight back out. And this is a boss setup is why I show this. Just kind of run back and forth. Hit the boss with that. Pop your channeling in. Summon when they try to do their big move. And you'll see, they start hitting for like over a million damage when they hit there. So... When you get them up to hitting for like a million with their auto attacks, you start taking bosses down pretty quickly. And this is the uh, single target setup I usually use. I do not keep Shadow of Justice on crowd control when I do bosses a lot. And uh, I use a, this lower level mark of focus just because of the mana cost on the bosses. It's kind of weird, but this is just the setup I use. And you're mainly just kind of getting around, setting up your minions. 
looking for opportune moments to get that maximum damage in. And then when you're not even doing anything, you'll be doing like 20 million DPS. That's just standing there. When you're actually using the Sacred Devotion, and you're getting the 16% minion damage amplification per stack, when you have it set up the way I do, that's insane. And if you awaken this with the plus two more stages, I don't think you're going to be able to get to it very often, especially in a raid fight. But maybe. And as you see, um, just using intellectual just to keep the uh, the cast speed. Cast speed's the only thing that really matters there. And just attaching as much to it as we can. Um, I ended up liking Sacred Devotion. It really gets you through boss fights quick. Shroud of Justice I keep off. Um, when I get into fights with uh, fire units or anything like that, Instead of using a pot, when the boss hits me, I usually behind my creatures. They get stunned, so I don't worry about the on crowd control. But I do get hit by fire and whatnot. As soon as that happens, you just switch over to control. Boom. Hit your shot of justice. Take that off. Summon out your rune knight. You can even go into armor mode here. That can help you out. Try to keep your defenses around 75% if you can. Something like that. Movement speed is a lot lower without the magic fun set up. But I still stick with the um, alert movement just because when I'm fighting a boss or anything like that, being able to just never be slowed down is just amazing. Um, it helps a lot against serpents and whatnot. You can teleport, she hits you with something, and you just keep moving as quick as you want to. Run over, hit her with something like this. Start channeling. As soon as she turns towards you, jump behind her, boom. Nice and easy. So this setup's pretty good for, for single target, but it's not really fun for mapping. So when mapping, um, especially if I'm not using the whirlwind build, I'll usually switch it up. So like we take we take this out here. This is more of a mapping setup that we would use. Something like this. I still want the um, the Lightning Rune Knight to do a lot of status effect. Um, if you can, try to throw in um, Body Shield or the, uh, the Elemental Resist one. Any of those will help a lot. You're just trying to keep him alive as much as possible. But this kind of mapping setup helps a lot with uh, just walking up and doing your channeling move real quick. Um, if you want, if you're not going for the maximum damage, especially for mapping, I'll switch this over here and we'll attach a lightning ability to this. So the entire time that we're channeling, we usually have lightning shooting out. Uh, charge release is one of the ones I recommend. And the reason why is because it has the e it's the easiest thing to stack up. Uh, chain lightning is immediate, but on the boss fights, you're just looking to get a nice little stack of charge releases flying out really helps out a lot. There's a lot of different things you can do here. Depends on what kind of minions you're using. And that would be one of the, the better setups that, that I like to use for mapping. Goes really quick. Every time you get hit by something, Tenacious Regeneration goes off. Uh, Shadow Justice always goes off, so you can always teleport and get out. Um, if you're looking to, to do a lot of um, higher-end maps, doing a lot of bossing and whatnot, might want to switch it up just a little bit like this. I'll just switch Sacred Devotion down here. Um, you can try to use a totem setup with your uh, Mark of Focus. Life totem was kind of working, but I, I messed one up that I had, so I'm not able to use that too, too well anymore right here. But yeah, this is the main setup that we're using. It's going to be your main bossing setup. A lot of questions that I would have, that I did have while I was leveling, and it's been pretty... Tough to figure out, but what I've gone with with Awakening. So, as you see here, some stuff we haven't really even leveled all the way fully. Because we've worked a lot more on just trying to get things awoken, trying to break down gems and stuff. So if you want to use Seal of Striking, you have to Awaken it. It gets you the 87% aura range. Um, it dampens it a bit, but this is the only way to make it affect your minions. You want to attach some stuff to it, the best thing is going to be dampen resource cost. 
and enhanced seal range. So this will give it 41% aura range. And with the awakening, I got 87% aura range. So pretty much wherever I'm at on the map, my minions are able to benefit from it. And your allies too. It affects everybody. It affects yourself and allies. Next thing that we awakened. And th this is origin, just in case there you go, origin up the top. Verity is what we awoken for Unite, Crowd, and Rage. If you're trying to hit damage numbers, you're trying to um, push the training so that you can get uh, a award with that, you may want to awaken this differently. But if you're just trying to map, make your mapping experience a little bit better, make sure you move around boss arenas a little bit faster, I went with the Verity, which gives you the movement speed and the armor. Almost perfect, too. 20% movement speed and 69%. Other thing we awoken was Strike here. Strike ended up being the most uh, amplification. Um, even though attack speed dampening happened, I went with that staff that uh, has tier 10 attack speed. And this ended up just being a lot more damage. Um, Origin's the best awakening. Attack speed amplification is what I went with. And you'll see that everything I woke in here is just kind of like in priority of what I want to do. So I needed to do more damage at one point. Awoken both of these things. These were the, the most the strongest awakenings I could come up with. Um after that, needed to do even more damage. So I legendary the sacred devotion. And then after the damage wasn't really a problem anymore, went with the Unite crowd, just move faster. So just, everything's just kind of awakened and done the way you, the way you're uh, progressing through the game. Um, you might not be at a point where you want to awaken things like this. You may just want to do like some kind of damage. Maybe you never get, get something with crit rate. You need to awaken the find weakness, or not awaken, but do a legendary. So just however you think it is. Uh, it, what I think order of importance is, is doing chain first or multi shot. These are both just as important to take to yellow quality or to legendary. Legendary quality gives you the the new effect. It just seems more important to me than um, these other ones, especially for mapping. Next thing to awaken I would do is um, your mana storm. Not your mana, not awaken, but turn into legendary. I keep thinking awakening. But legendary, your mana storm. And then do not use strike until you're ready to awaken it. So strike, just hold off on. Don't don't even level it. Just hold hold off on strike until you're ready to do the awakening. When you do the the attack speed amplification awakening, go ahead and go into strike. In the meantime, um, the strongest thing that you can use is going to be the minion damage, and you probably get this first. So just use minion damage in place of strike. And then for single target, we're going to take out. Chain, we're going to use minion damage here. And the reason why we don't use minion damage on maps is because in maps, projectiles are so powerful that this extra damage your minions take, I don't really like. So I just stick with using the strike instead. Not sure on the aggressive, where it says your minions behave aggressively. I haven't noticed it be anything where having it in on your minions was a make or break thing. I haven't even really noticed what it actually does. I, they do seem to be more aggressive when I have it in, but that just might be me thinking that's happening. Last things to legendary are going to be things like your mana storm, your amplification for your projectile damage. These things just give raw damage. It's great, but you're going to get plus two mana costs on the mana storm. And this is just 5% projectile damage amplification with some base damage increase. These are good damage increases. But the other things I'm talking about beforehand are going to give you the, the bigger value. Um, especially maybe even going in more in on minion damage. I just haven't done this one yet. I know that awakening minion damage could be very great. Um, just haven't done this one yet. Uh, the next thing that you might want to make it legendary is the minion HP. The 2% regen per second is amazing. The staying power for your lightning rune knight or whatever rune knight you're using is quadrupled when you have a minion HP at legendary. So 
this is a good one to do. And uh, that's kind of like how I, how I would awaken things. So I would go with your first awakening should always be strike because you can't use this without using the awakening. Second awakening should be strike again, the actual link rune for it. So you got seal of striking and then strike if you want to use strike. If you don't care about using strike, go ahead and awaken your minions. Maybe awaken something, um, something else on your tree. There's quite a few different things that are amazing here, even using your movement. Um, for the minions here, ended up getting HP amplification, skill cooldown recovery. Uh, I went over this a bit ago, but I ended up liking this. It's the uh, source one. Yeah, your damage is lowered a little bit, but the staying power of them and being able to summon them back out after they die, especially in a raid fight, if they all get killed at once, the increased cooldown recovery is uh, more valuable than e even having a little bit more armor pen and whatnot. You're going to just have more uptime on your minions, and some effects are just not going to even affect them. They're going to get knocked down to like 10% HP, and that's a lot more damage you had than them being dead. You have to resummon them out. So that's the awakening I like. Um, I still would go for the damage one if someone is going to, but I did a random awakening. That's why I did that. So you see, what, you see me doing the source here. Don't think that this is what you need to do. This is just what I did with a random awakening. Last thing to make legendary is the sacred devotion. This is for damage alone. It reduces your, um, your caster effect. So that's kind of nice too. But it also takes longer to get that max stage up. And as you see, I even have knowledge equipped because the increased cast speed helps with getting this, this uh, last stack up. And getting these stacks up is not easy in the raid. Sometimes you've got to move so often you're not able to keep them up very well. So here's the skill base. And hopefully that helps people out with um, what you're wanting to do for more of a single target build and kind of like an end game build type of situation. You're going to have a couple different ways you're going to set up your tree using the uh, single target build that I'm showing you here. Um, and this isn't full. If I, could, if I could unlock the rest of this, you'd see exactly what I want to do. So I might have to show a screenshot of something with that. And then um, here's the runes that we use. Runestone, we got the Sacred Devotion effect equipped and the plus one level. We've got the 22% damage while Blue Rune is equipped with the Javelin Abyssling. And that does work with minions. And the increased tenacious regeneration effect. The plus one skill rune level. So just kind of going with something that helps everything. It doesn't matter if it's a really huge effect, just as long as it helps something on your tree. Okay, so for some of the last build stuff, we've already gone over a lot of like what the legendaries are. I thought would be good to level up first and make legendary. Focusing on damage first, so you're trying to work on your Abyssling and work on all the damage links first. And then anything that you don't see legendary, I'm not planning on awakening. So we've got minion HP, planning on doing more with this. It seems to be the strongest thing for the, the minion. Um, the setup that you see right here, it's supposed to involve electric area, but I'm still messing with things. So um, this is more just to show you all the runes that I thought were important real quick. Uh, anyway, let's go back. We got strike. This is the first. Th this is the first thing I'd awaken if you want to use strike. If you're not going to use strike with your build, and you don't need the amp, then don't worry about it. And we do the awakening for the attack speed amplification. Sacred devotion was pretty powerful, getting the extra max stage, um, movement speed, and everything. We've gone over a lot of these things. So, the the main thing I want to go over is like what you might want to awaken next and what I think was going to be important for me. So in this build, we've got Find Weakness. Find Weakness doesn't really add any actual damage other than critical strike rate, which is a lot of damage. It's just that there's no amp going on here. There's no damage numbers. So I was wanting to try to figure out a way to replace Find Weakness. Um, whenever I do, the damage numbers do go down. And for general mapping, you can. You don't need to crit that much for general mapping. So you can like throw in a different gem throw in anything that you kind of want to do here so it does a lot more down 115,000 was added there this only adds 72 
but overall this will do more damage because the six crit rate's just too much. So the plan here is, is and I haven't done it yet, but I, this is more of just like the theory until I awaken this one, which is probably going to be here soon, is if I throw Unity in here, we're getting the damage dampening for our minions. We're getting the pretty much 100% Abyssling damage if you have the five Abysslings out. And you also get the damage amplification per Abyssling summoned. This is, seems pretty powerful, and I've had a lot of people come into my chat and whatnot and say that it doesn't work very well. Every minion build I've said that brought it up said it lowered their damage. Well, it's kind of meant to dampen the damage of the minions and just kind of give you an overall unity, if, like it's called. So, <clears throat> to benefit the most from it, because it does seem like a powerful powerful one, if, you want, if you're going to use it, making it legendary like I did did not increase the damage with the damage amp. Um, the, the crit was still better, just with my current build. So I was thinking about awakening this and using the Abyssling critical rate. Getting the 30% per Abyssling is going to be near as much as what Find Weakness gives you just without the 6 crit. So we might awaken this here shortly, get the origin, see if it's better than Find Weakness. And if I can use that instead of Find Weakness more often, the damage reduction and whatnot I think is going to help a lot with kind of how the build's been going for me, especially with getting a source on my Abysslings. So hopefully that'll help people with what you want to do with Unity. I don't 100% think that Source is a good one at all. And Verity is powerful, but I don't think that the damage amplification is going to be as powerful as getting this crit rate, especially since you can maybe get rid of uh, Find Weakness with this. I'll update another video letting people know what I think about that once I actually awaken it. And in the meantime, we might have made it something just for like raw damage, like uh, Mana Storm. Not 100% sure on that yet. Even even the plus two max sacred devotion would be a lot of raw damage, just if we can keep it up. That's something I just wanted to go over. A lot of people, I'm sure, wonder if unity is good, and it is. It It's a good skill, it's just it's not going to be a lot of damage, which is, I think, what a lot of people thought it would be with the damage amplification. It's mainly there for that damage reduction on your on your minions. Last thing that we're going to go over... is the relics. Now, your relics, very important. I uh, recently started using the relics a lot more and figuring out what we want, I wanted to do with them. <clears throat> and this is what we've come up with. Uh, I go with Acubin first, mainly because the minion crit rate and crit damage help the minions out a lot there. And you can even kind of use their actives. It helps with um, keeping electric, stat electric shock up and whatnot. Even the lightning orb is pretty powerful. Now, once you're a little bit higher level or you're stronger and you have multiple relics, what I recommend doing is if you want a tanky build, you can go with the Castor to really get your uh, your minions a lot more tanky. But for raw damage and whatnot, Acubin and Boreal seem to be the strongest that I've tried. I like the HP and the HP regen. It goes with what the build is. And then when you go into the active skills, this... Um, Physical damage taken amplification for cursed enemies and bleed chance for, for cursed enemies has been the strongest for the build that I have. So the curse of power, very powerful. It uh, increases your damage a lot out of all the other relics that I've seen. I've reset a couple times and this has been the best setup that I've come up with for overall mapping, overall bossing and everything. And yes, you can use up to three relics. You only get one active relic, so you can use the active ability. The other two abilities here are just passives. So hopefully that helps people out with what kind of relics you might want to be using. 